All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again. Welcome back. All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again. Welcome back. I'm back on the river. This time I'm going to do a vertical. I've got a clear prime Belgian linen again, so it's got a primer on it, a clear primer, so it's protected. I'm going to be using pallet knives and paint, oil paint. Now, got these big tins, I'm just going to get stuck into putting some of that on now. The, the beauty about these tins is, stops you being stingy, so you use heaps of paint, which is great, but at the same time, you stick plenty on, and then, if you don't use it, stick it back in the tin before it's got a chance to tack or dry. And then that way, you're not really wasting anything. So that's an ultramarine blue. Now I'll go for a burnt sienna. Good stuff. Burnt sienna, beautiful colour. I don't want to get too carried away, just have to look how big the canvas actually is. I don't want to, there's no point putting tons of paint if it's not particularly big canvas. Or linen, I should say, Belgian linen. I stretch these linens myself. It's a clear prime Belgian linen, so I put three coats. The linen comes unprimed with me. I buy the unprimed and then I put three coats of sealer on it. Oh, watch out for that wind. Watch out for that wind. All right, so this one, just got a bin over here, I'll drop the lid in. This one hasn't been used yet, so it's got, just had a plastic coat on it to stop it tacking and setting. So it's brand new, straight out. Beauty. Good stuff. Lovely stuff. that one over there. Now the titanium white, I'll buy a whole litre of that. They're 500 mils, the other colours. But this one, because you go through so much white, oh my god, still got that, yep. <laughs> because you go through so much white, it's good to, <clears throat> what do we got here? It's good to go in bulk, it's cheaper. All right. Look at that lovely, beautiful stuff. I'll stick plenty on so I'm not too stingy, but like I said, I won't overdo it. Right. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre and titanium white, and a bit of magenta here which I've got in a canister, I'll just squeeze that out. It's a great colour, beautiful colour. And some of the colours that I don't use as much of, I don't use heaps of this Viridian Green, so I just use a tube, that's fine. And the alizarin crimson, I don't tend to use too much for that either, so I'll just go for the tube version. There we go, look at that. Okay, now, I think I might tape the edges today. Because this Belgian linen is such a beautiful thing in itself, it's good to make it part of the picture, so... I'll just tape it off a bit. Let's have a look. Probably should have done it before I got the paint out, that way I wouldn't wear it for so well, doesn't matter, let's do this. Okay, that goes there. That's nice. Get 
this one's set up. What do we got? Just lift that again and put that there. Okay. Now we'll run one across the top. All right, let's get this even. That goes up there like so on that side. I like to get this all straight, obviously. One of the best ways to tell if it's straight is getting down my end here. Let's have a look at this. Yep, that's good. All right, we got that. Okay, now. Just set this one up. That's there. Okay, now on the bottom, I like to just have slightly more than the sides and top. I find if you, have, you need a little bit more on the bottom, otherwise it feels kind of top heavy. So we've got a little bit there. And the important thing is to get those edges in. That's too much. Not too much paint sneaks under the edge. All right, let's do that. All right. I'll put this one down now so we get a better view of the scene. All right, let's stand back and have a look what we got. Okay. Now I need to compose the scene in my head, all right. I'm gonna work, it's vertical. Got to watch out for this thing. That's just so I've got a little veranda here, not a big one. Keep that out of the way, right. I'm working vertical and I'm going to mainly go water. I want plenty of water in this one, so. Just grab a bit of white and a bit of blue to block in. Just make a light blue so I can get my, like color, and not coloring, it's a bit like doing a linear, a tiny bit of linear, just to feel what I want. We want that there. So what am I doing? I'm just composing a few lines, that's all. Just giving myself an idea of what I want. Yes, that, not too much of that. Right, that can be there. That can be there, right. That can be a bit of a tree. Trees there, some trees there. All right, let me have a look at that. That's basically just a few lines to get me started. That's about what I want. So now, I'll get stuck into putting some of the darkest darks. Right, what have we got here? Some of the darkest darks. Alizarin crimson. 
Viridian green makes a fairly good dark. Maybe a bit of ultramarine blue, that'll really darken her off. Just establish a few things here and there. Okay, now, there the darkest dark's done. Tiny bit just there, all right. Okay. Now I might go for some magenta, ultramarine blue. Just gonna go back a bit and a little bit of white with that to lighten the tone. So ultramarine blues and magentas. Bit of Viridian green with that. Viridian green, magenta, bit of white to lighten the tone. This gives me a kind of neutral, neutral colour. It's a little bit green, it's a little bit purple. A little bit blue. Okay. Viridian, Viridian, magenta. This canvas is a little coarser, or this linen I should say, is a little coarser than what I've been using. So as you're blocking in, I'm noticing I've just got to go a little heavier in the amount of paint I'll put on to get it to, to get to go. Oh, let me have a look at that. That's kind of what I want. So those colours are, as I was saying, magentas and greens and blue and white. Just varied, like a rainbow effect, opalized effect, I guess. And that will give me a good bit of variety like, out, like is what is out there anyway. Because some of the foliage, some of the dark tones are the greens of the foliage. Some of the trunks, so they've got more of a magenta purple. So it varies. Now, what have we got here? Burnt sienna, yellow ochre. A bit more yellow ochre. Aha, uh -huh. where's my phthalo? Very strong blue and one that I haven't put out yet. I don't use much of it because it's so strong. Phthalo blue. Green, green blue, a very strong pigment. Okay. A bit of ultramarine blue thrown into that. What have I got? A bit more ultramarine blue and a bit more white. Just trying to mix up the lower portion of the sky. So it's a bit keyed down with atmospheric haze. Let's have a look. Although it's a cleaner blue than that, so it's going to need some more ultramarine. But it's already got those burnt siennas and yellow ochres. Yes, tiny bit of thalo to really sting it up. That is powerful colour now. Yeah, that's good. So just pop it here and there. And all the negative spaces. Bit of it here. It's working out where they're all going to be, obviously. Let's have a look. That's, I'll leave that for now, right? A 
bit more ultramarine blue, a bit more white, but still slightly darker, so there's less, a little bit less white in the mix, and it's a bit cleaner blue. Just trying to keep out of the way here, so you can see the camera's right behind me today to try and get a better view. upper level. Ultramarine with a little bit more red in it, so there's a bit of magenta. So we've got ultramarine blue and a little bit of magenta. Getting there. Okay. A little bit of down here for the reflection. Just stand back and have a look at that. Camera's still on. Good, good, good. Okay. Now we're going for the biggest differences all the time between what it was when we started and the subject. I'll just put that there when it's windy. It just stops that paper towel from blowing everywhere. But sometimes she falls off like that, so. <laughs> okay. Mix up some burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Use a bit of that sky color. Bit of Viridian green. Colors that water. There's a lot of yellow ochre in the water today. Beautiful sunny day. A lot of yellow ochre. Pretty and green. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a beautiful color today. Just got a tiny bit more green. Mixing a version of that yellow ochre burnt sienna and Viridian green. Should have mixed up a bit more than that. Mixing on the go, mixing on the go. It's just a little bit more magenta in the distance there, so with that sky blue, I'm making a bit of a magenta -y. Bit of blue there, bit of magenta. That can be half mixed with that, just to knock it back a bit. Have a look. Okay, just keep on mixing, keep on getting the paint on. through that like you would not believe. I'd like to get a bit more Viridian Green. <whistles> a 
bit more Viridian Green. We're going through tons of that today. Chewing it up. Right. Okay, where am I building up? Oh, just there, just there. More yellow ochre. Beautiful colour today. Beautiful colour that water. Yeah. Really nice colour. Like I said, back here it just it's just got a little bit of those magentas and stuff in it to knock it back a bit. bit richer as it comes up. Just blending that sky and that water in the foreground here, that blue. Pulling those two colours together. So you get a slight feeling of that reflection in there. So you go, what colour is it? Oh, is it the colour of the water or is it the colour of the sky? Am I seeing the reflection? Or am I seeing the colour of the water? Well, it's a bit of both, so. Let's have a look what we got, eh? Okay, now. Right. Magenta, blue and white. Half mix it with those colours. Just trying to get the feeling of that foliage on the trees, the light source. Oops, here we go. Just lightly pull through, letting those shadows... Letting the shadows come through also. The underpaint. Don't see any yellow ochre. Okay. I'll stand back and have a look, analyze. Getting there, getting there, right. It's a bit of white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Making more of an ochre colour now. White burning, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Quite a light tone. Slightly smaller knife. Beautiful light and shadow coming down there. It's 
It's picking out all those headlands. drawing a bit with a knife, taking paint off to clarify the edge of that. Now, just mix up Viridian Green, pure white to make a really high key green. With that high key green, I'll then add a little bit of yellow ochre and that gives a really bright foliage color. Some of the some of the growth on the top of this is just, it's got that kind of colour to it. Not that much colour, hang on. Bit more yellow oak in it. All right, now, blue, white. Bit more blue than that. French ultramarine blue and white. Mix up a bit of a, a, bit of a blue with that one, all right. Sticking better re reflection of the sky in the water. Okay, a little bit of magenta in this earlier mix. A bit of white. Just knocking it back a bit. So the bank on this side is a little bit further away, so it's a bit receded with blues and magentas to knock that ochre back a bit. That bank's receded this that little bit. Let's keep on playing here for a while. Filling a few things. Just little marks broken colour. Okay, get some clean blue for bits of wind on the water. Like so, just, just chuffs of wind just kicking along and they just reflect the sky back in, like so. I might mix up another brew of, what do we got here? 
ultramarine. Bit of phthalo, just mixing up a little bit of sky colour again. Seem to have lost that. What do we got? It's pretty bright today, so yeah. Nice bright. We have, there's plenty of brightness going on in the sky today, so we can flick a bit of that in. We really add a bit of spice here and there. Just little bits and pieces here and there. Okay, now. Bit more ultramarine to darken a tad. Just introducing a little bit more paint into the sky, thickening it up a bit. Getting there, getting there. Now, so I can get an idea of what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna take the tape off now. I've gotten to the stage where I feel like I can probably take it off so I can work out what I've got. It always looks different. Always looks different when you take the tape off. Makes it easier, easier to judge what to do next. Drop that in the bin and I'll stand back and analyze so I can work it out. And put a bit more of that sky blue down into there to the negative space of the tree shape Just stick a few highlights. So I'll get some pure white and cad yellow deep. Knife on edge. Ooh, nasty. With the knife on edge. So half mix that. Putting random marks here and there. Just get that one. Drawing with the edge of the knife. Putting the detail of those trunks in, I'll stand back and level what's going on. That really starts to pull the painting together because it gives the illusion of detail. You've got the big block in. And as soon as you start doing things like this, it really starts to feel like something's refining and getting it together.
got to keep getting back and analysing everything you do the closer it gets to being finished. Nice shadows jutting out there from from a tree just out of the picture. Beautiful cool blue tones. Picking out a few more of those shadows on the distance. The distant bank. They're a nice cool blue too. All right, so get some of this white ultramarine blue, thalo, get some real twangy, strong blues happening. Paint some of the trunks in shadow. Got a few vertical marks like so. Stand back and have another look. It really starts to give the feeling of sunlight when you get the light and shadow. Knife on the edge. Right. Okay, well, actually I'm pretty happy with what I've done now. I reckon I've pretty much got the big impression of what I was trying to achieve. So we've got the vertical here, mainly about the water, with some beautiful headlands jutting off and receding as they go off into the distance. Got the beautiful raw linen, because that linen is such a nice thing, I love to make a feature of it. But then, these banks, there's a lot of raw linen in the bank, and I'll show you that in a minute when we get the camera off. And also the foreground where I'm standing here, I've just left that completely blank linen. Just a couple of red flecks just to show a little bit of weed right on the edge. So basically I'm making the most out of that Belgian linen, using it to enhance the picture. All right, so we'll get the camera off and we'll have a closer look and pan around and see what you guys think. Now, if you like this video, remember to give the thumbs up and share it around to all your mates. And if you haven't yet subscribed, remember to do that and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of any of these videos as I upload them.
the right first thing in the morning here we are. Sneaking off down the river for that painting.
Right, there we go. Beautiful morning light. Got up way, way, way before Spoggies. Probably about a kilometre away from camp. I knew this was going to be a great composition, so that's what that scouting around last night was all about, yesterday evening. Scouting around to find the perfect composition for this morning. Now, it's all pre-planned. Get up really early before the sun's even hinting, hinting about waking up. Get everything together, have a cup of tea of course. Get in the canoe and paddle in that magic hour. Beautiful stuff. Oh. Pre-dawn. Just silent and perfect. Cruising along the river for about a kilometre. Bit over half a mile. Happy with that painting. One of those spontaneous in the moment, capturing that special sort of light that a camera has trouble picking up on. Whereas the human eye can register those colours quite easily. It always seems to be the subtlety between the light and the shadow. Your camera might pick up beautiful light, but then in the shadow areas it may become a bit dark or vice versa. The shadows might be nice, but it's a bit bleached out in the light source. Whereas the eyes just register the two perfectly. Those birds. They're great. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.